Hello everybody. Today I'm going to be teaching you how to use Pi ISO tools. Pi ISO tools is an ISO manipulation program that I developed to be the successor to GCR. GCR is an ISO manipulation tool that's been around for quite a while. It's done an okay job, but unfortunately it has bugs and stability issues that just were hard to overlook. So with that being said, we're going to get started and to start you're going to need an iso file to manipulate for today i have super mario sunshine which i legally attained using an iso extraction method with a disk that i purchased now we're going to open up pi iso tools and then we're going to be presented with a layout that's very similar to GCR. This is something that I intentionally chose to do because I wanted the program to be very familiar to GCR users. So we're going to start by doing file and open ISO. And then we're just going to pick the file that we choose to manipulate. Now we are presented with an interface that's once again very similar to GCR. We have ISO details, banner details, and the file system tree. So first, we're going to want to extract our ISO. That way we can make more complicated edits to the ISO using Windows file system. So to do this, you have two options. Firstly, you can right click the root node and then click extract ISO to, or you can click file and then do extract. Now you're going to want to pick a parent folder for your extracted ISO to reside in. For this, I'm going to create a new folder and I'm just going to call it SMS root for Super Mario Sunshine root. Now we'll do select folder and it's going to extract the ISO into that folder for us. Now that it's extracted the ISO for us, we now have our SMS root folder. And if we take a look inside, we're going to see that there is a parent root, which has files and system. System is reserved for system files, such as the game's code or some information about its maker. Files is where all the data files reside. It's where your assets are, such as stages, characters, and music. So for our purposes, I've created hooray.txt, which is just a silly file. It tells you hooray, very nice. We're just gonna drag that to the root of this files folder. Now we can just close out of Windows file system and we're going to do file and close to close our ISO context that we had. And now we can do open root and choose the roots folder that was inside the destination folder we provided. Once we do this, we're going to once again be presented with the same interface, except now Pi ISO tools has opened it in the context of an extracted root. What this means is now our changes are going to appear, such as hooray.txt, but additionally, we have a couple more advanced options at our disposal. For instance, we can right-click a file and then do set alignment to set the file's alignment, which is very good for certain data operations on the GameCube and Wii, which require alignment of this kind. For our purposes, 32 byte alignment is a very good option to support most hardware limitations. So we're going to do OK. And now the file location has been aligned to a 32 byte alignment. Additionally, you can also set the file's absolute position in the ISO for whatever reason you might need to do that by right clicking and doing set position. Here, you're just going to type out the hexadecimal value that is within the range of min and max. So I'm just going to do 1 million for this. And you'll see that now the file's location is at 1 million in hex. Very nice. Uh, lastly, you could also exclude a file by right clicking and doing exclude. Now you'll see that the text is faded out and the file location is set to zero. This is because it is no longer being considered in the ISO's final build. It still is contained in Windows file system, that way you can utilize it however you need, but it is no longer a part of the build system. This is really great 
for workflows, which might create temporary files, or maybe the scripts themselves you want to have within the roots, but you don't want to have it built into your ISO. Next, there's also the ISO and banner details, which are free for us to edit. For us to edit these, it's as simple as just changing the text in the text boxes. So for instance, I'm going to name this Super Mario Eclipse, which is the up and coming Super Mario Sunshine mod that Eclipse team is developing. You can also change the game code. So for this, I'm just going to do boop and the maker code as well. We're going to do 48 and you could also change the version or the disk ID and you can also change the build date. So for instance, I'm going to set the build date to the time of recording, which is May 19th. And that's all those ISO details edited. We can also edit, of course, the banner details, which is the same process. You're just going to change the text and the text boxes as you see fit. But you can also change the banner's image. And to do this, we're just going to click import. And then we're going to select an image of our choice. For my purposes, I'm just going to do this silly Mario Kart Wii banner. You're going to see that it tells you that it's resizing the image for you. And now you can see we have this silly Mario Kart Wii banner as the image. And so from here, we can do save changes. And this is going to save just the banner details to save the whole ISO changes that we've made, including the ISO details and the file system information. You have two options. You can click file and save, or you can just hit control S. Both of them do the same thing. They're going to save all of the information on this ISO that we've done. So from here, now we're going to want to build our ISO to have these changes that we've created. So to do this, firstly, I'm going to re-include our hooray.txt, and then we're going to do file build, and then we're just going to provide a unique file path or a file path that already exists. Doing a unique file path is going to create a new ISO while selecting a file path that exists, like I'm doing here, is going to overwrite the ISO with our new changes. So once we click yes, we're going to see that it builds. And after it builds, we're just going to try out our changes in Dolphin Emulator. So now you can see that the ISO has the name Boop48, and it has also booted successfully. So this is how you make changes to ISOs using Pi ISO tools. All the features that I've shown that are available is everything that you need to support any sort of feature or behavior for a game. With that being said, I thank you for watching. If you have any questions, I will try to answer all of them in the comments of this video, and I will see you next time.